you have probably noticed, uh, Kathleen and I exchanged order in the presentation because my paper builds a bit on the information that Kathleen gave you about the Canadian situation. So my paper is uh, called From the Invisible Hand to the Invisible Woman, and you'll see why. In, uh, in my paper, uh, I build on the information that in Canada and in many other states, we now use social tax expenditure more in order to redistribute uh, welfare benefits to uh, individuals. So I, uh, I focus on social tax expenditure, which are uh, tax expenditure very similar to welfare benefits. The introduction of uh, these welfare benefits, or the STEs, into tax law uh, have the potential for a clash of interest between, uh, in fact, between tax policy and uh, our normative uh, criteria for analysis of tax policy and, uh, and those of uh, welfare benefits. Tax laws have uh, been under a lot of pressures toward uh, pressure towards uh, neutrality, uh, legal neutrality, but also uh, neutrality because of the normative criteria for studying uh, tax law, which uh, the main or the most important for my um, uh, my paper is equity. Equity uh, takes into account the capacity of taxpayers to pay or to contribute to tax, which is. Uh, an important criteria when you study uh, the normative or the technical part of income tax law, but which cannot be the sole criteria for studying the redistributive part of, uh, of taxation. So uh, equity, because it focuses only on uh, income and no other personal characteristics of individual, is can be problematic when uh, it's time for redistribution. Equity and the capacity to uh, contribute to income tax uh, also fails to consider what Kathleen has mentioned before that income uh, may be associated to other individual characteristics of individual. And that's why my paper focused on women. Neoliberalism, as Kathleen also mentioned, put a lot of pressure toward uh, neutrality and gender neutrality or apparent gender neutrality into tax laws and in all uh, other laws. So the question of my paper is, well, what happens if on behalf of this neutrality, uh, tax policy maker fails to consider gender into tax policy implementation and particularly when implementing STEs, uh, which should not be so gender neutral. So my bigger question is gender neutrality, neutrality of tax law, because although written in neutral terms, STEs and tax policy discourse relating to STEs may contain a gender assumption on the road for women that could, in subsequent implementation, affect women's relationship to the STEs and women's equality uh, or fiscal equality. I conducted a uh, thematic discourse analysis of uh, all documents emanating from uh, the Government of Canada since uh, the tax reform in 1972, so it was uh, almost 10,000 pages of documents of debates in the House of Commons, in the Senate, uh, reports, uh, press release, uh, budgets, so to see how woman was represented in the tax policy discourse regarding uh, STEs. So I chose STEs uh, concerned with care, care of children or care of dependents, and all other dependents. I thought it was uh, time for uh, tax policy and uh, actually uh, STEs to be introduced not in tax policy uh, analysis, but in the welfare state analysis, because that's really where they belong. They are a form of redistribution which belongs to the welfare state. So I introduced uh, the welfare state theory into uh, my paper. 
So I used it for two reasons. I used this literature to uh, design my three periods because my analysis is uh, uh, separated into three periods. The social democratic welfare state, which for the purpose of my paper starts with the tax reform in 1972 and ends at the end, at the end, the end of the 70s. Then the neoliberal period, uh, the 80s and the beginning of the 90s, so until 92, and then the social investment period, uh, which is from 92 to now. I also uh, used teams supported by the welfare state literature in order to code my data and to analyze uh, the data. So I used the O'Connor Art of the Chamber uh, uh, power meter for studying the welfare state. The first uh, conclusion of my paper is that it's not strictly concerned with gender, but uh, you'll see it will have a broad question on uh, gender. It's true the three periods under study. The discourse around STEs is limited to a conversation in terms of the technical aspect of tax law, which limited the potential for the redistribution discourse. So we stick to the capacity to pay of taxpayers, and we never go beyond that to see uh, who benefits from the welfare benefits and or the STEs, and uh, why they don't benefit from the STEs. So it's really focused on the tax theory. <clears throat> so, main, during the three periods, so from 72 to now, if a taxpayer has no tax liability in the tax policy discourse, <coughs> technical problem is solved. It's very important if the taxpayer benefits or not from uh, the SDEs, which should not be the case because uh, welfare benefits should uh, target lower income taxpayers, and in this case, if they don't have income to pay, they don't benefit from it, there is no problem, according to the tax policy. <clears throat> so this uh, discursive approach uh, concerning SDEs limits the availability of the debate to address social policy, equality, or even the possibility of encouraging the entry of women into the labor market, as Kathy mentioned earlier. Second conclusion of the paper, the tax policy discourse in relation to SD is not gender neutral. Though uh, the law is written in gender neutral term, uh, the tax policy discourse is not. In construing SDEs uh, during the three period, uh, assumptions are made about women and their role to society. These assumptions, and uh, the assumptions were more present in the first period than in the uh, last few years because we don't even mention women uh, starting in 2000. Uh, these assumptions carry the risk of uh, not being able to account for gender in uh, implementing <coughs> STDs. <coughs> so in the first period, in the social democratic welfare state, um, in conversation of around women, so in the 70s, conversation of around women is important. She's a mother, she's a spouse, she sometimes work, uh, but she fulfills a traditional role, mm -hmm. which is not valued. Uh, women are dependent on their husband in tax policy discourse, and they are not the target of tax policy, their husband is. Women are encouraged to uh, remain in their traditional role, role at home, as the next uh, excerpt will uh, prove. But we recognize that there's an issue of power within the family, so that uh, the relation of power may uh, not be equal. So this is, uh, I chose one of the extract uh, from my paper. I chose this one because uh, it's really representative of what's going on during this year. So um, it's a discussion about the child care expense deduction here in Canada, which is a deduction uh, when you pay child care expenses, which is limited to a certain uh, threshold. During these years, it was thousand dollars per child, I think, and uh, they were thinking of implementing that deduction, which did not exist before the tax reform in 1972. So uh, it's a, 
uh, report of the Standing Committee on Finance, so from the government. And the report says, the first question to consider is its purpose of the child care expense deduction. That is, is it meant to give relief only to the needy, where the wife works from necessity, or where is it, there is only one parent? Or is it meant to, take, to make it easier for women at all income levels to work outside of home, regardless of whether it is from choice or from necessity? And the answer, there is of course no question of the desirability of giving the relief to the needy. The question of the woman who works from choice is different, and there is, or at least has been in the past, a feeling that she should not be encouraged to leave her children. So basically, during the 70s, that's the discourse around uh, STDs and sex calls. During the next period, the neoliberal welfare state, this citizen is the worker. So he is the uh, one who he or she, but mostly he during that period, is the person we consider as important in tax policy implementation. Woman is made more and more invisible because uh, the equality concept changed. The childcare expenses we uh, just talked about earlier uh, was first uh, given to the woman, so she was the one who could take the deduction in her tax return. This had to change during the neoliberal period because uh, the Human Rights Tribunal had uh, decided that this measure discriminated against men in favor of women. So we needed, uh, government needed to change it. And the uh, concept of equity became uh, everybody must be treated in the same identical way. So this is a. Uh, Excerpt from the budget papers in 1983. She also, she's also invisibilized because uh, she's part of the family unit, and more and more uh, benefits, again, as Kathleen mentioned, are calculated on family income, and this really started during the 1980s. There are no more discussions during that period about uh, power relations within the family unit. <coughs> Starting in 1992, there are no more discussions about women or gender. Uh, she's completely invisible in the discourse, and um, it's on really rare occasions that we uh, find the word woman in the discourse or that any, uh, anything related to gender in the discourse. It's even so true that uh, starting in 2006, uh, there is and I think Reese will maybe mention that there has been a return in the tax policy discourse to encouragement of the traditional family where one of the parents stay at home. And uh, starting then, we see that encouragement of the traditional family, but it's never mentioned that uh, the woman could be the person who remain at, remains at home. And when we use example in the discourse, it's example of men staying at home. So, Care and unpaid work does not belong to women anymore. The, the main actor in tax policy discourse during that period is the vulnerable children and the hard working families, which are deserving uh, important tax costs that uh, start in 2006. So, SDEs are no longer welfare benefits, they are now tax cuts, and that limits uh, the power of redistribution of uh, the SDEs. That's all I wanted to say. Thank you.